Hey guys, I've just seen a lot of news articles lately that have uh, relevance to Disney. Um, and as a, as a Disney shareholder, wanted to um, create a small just video reacting to some of the news, giving my thoughts on you know the, the news, um, Disney overall uh, from bird's eye view. Um, and, and, and yeah, there, there's been lots of things in kind of global advertising, streaming, sports uh, that, that I wanted to just touch on quick over the last few days. The first one and probably the most notable uh, is reports that Amazon is looking to expand their presence as a, as a media com company into building out a standalone app for sports content. I was really interested to see this. Um, I know they've owned and, and continue to show interest in NFL football rights, um, but I honestly was a bit surprised to see they're looking at potentially launching a standalone platform um, for sports, just you know, given their entire flywheel is really predicated on getting people into Prime. Um, so maybe it'll be like a huge discount if you have Prime. Um, I really thought they were using media as more of a retention tool uh, for their prime user. So people don't cancel, um, or one more reason not to cancel. So this is really interesting news for Amazon. Um, for Disney, this, this obviously isn't great news. If they actually go through with this, it's one more person bidding very heavily, almost as a loss leader segment of their business, um, uh, against them for the same type of sporting rights that, that they're bidding on for ESPN. So if this materializes, it could equate to lower returns on invested capital for the sports side of the business, um, them not getting as much um, of, of the sports rights that they need to be kind of the, the thoroughbred leader in sports. Um, so I think this is one thing that is definitely um, worth keeping an eye on if, if you're a Disney shareholder. Um We'll continue to monitor it. The, the stock traded down. I think it was close to three percent on this news, uh, which, given it's still super early stages, I'd say that's probably about a, a fair response from the market on the sports front. Um, the next piece of news was on Avatar. So Avatar obviously was at the time, ten or twelve years ago, that the initial Avatar was released from Fox. Uh, I think it was the number one grossing film, uh, at least on the launch. Um, I think since then, there's been two or three that have uh, jumped it, like Avengers Endgame and such, uh, but still a very successful film. Uh, and they acquired the rights to Avatar as part of their $70 billion gigantic takeover of, of Fox. So now they own the rights. They've been working on a couple Avatar movies. I think they have this one, which is the second Avatar, as well as the third one already filmed. Um, so this has been a big bet, was one of the, the big components from a flagship asset standpoint that they got over in that huge mega deal. Um, so everyone really wants to see it help pay out. Um, I believe in order for it to be deemed a success, the creator of the film has mentioned they need to do at least $2 billion dollars because the budget and the, and the marketing was so high. So $2 billion would help them squeeze out a small, like reasonable profit. Um, anything in excess of that is, is just more and more profit. But $2 billion is really the, the line in the sand that they're targeting. Um, 14 days in, they're at $1 billion. I've seen some comments, especially after the first week, on how this was slightly disappointing, not as high of numbers coming out of China, um, some pandemic related issues there on consumer traffic. Um, and then obviously the winter storm in the US didn't help last week either. I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert on movie sales run rates, but given there's not really another big movie that's coming to market in the next couple months or six to seven weeks, um, I think a billion dollars in two weeks seems to be decent. Um, so I, I think they're well on their way to that $2 billion break even here. I think uh, aside from this obviously boding well for assuming they hit that number for Avatar 3, which was already filmed, 
I think they also are looking at making Avatar 4 and, and onwards uh, over the next decade. So this kind of can spell out uh, a new franchise for them. I think they've already uh, created an Avatar section in one of their theme parks. So this is a big bet. It seems like it's not going to flop, at least from my perspective, early on. Um, and hopefully they do hit that $2 billion and exceed that $2 billion, And they can really build this out into a huge franchise, spin-off shows, spin-off movies, stuff like that. Um, because they definitely need something fresh on the, the Disney side. Um, next here on Disney, just generally for, for media, this is an article that came out talking about how um, you know the media companies obviously have had a terrible 22 uh, 23 doesn't look like they're set up for much better. They highlight primarily ad rates, streaming uh, subscribers expected to slow down as well um, as the kind of core things. And then the continued acceleration of, of um, linear TV uh, cancellation. So a couple comments here. Um, I think from a streaming side Disney has at least gotten to the point where they have relatively good scale on subscriber count and they really need to focus on making that business more profitable, whether it's break even or actually squeaking out a profit. Um, they really need to start glide pathing to much stronger profitability numbers instead of burning, you know, four or five, six, up to $10 billion uh, over the last couple of years on, on this streaming endeavor. So I think it was strategically made sense. Their huge business of TV was getting, um, was getting uh, disrupted and they needed to play there. They had the IP, the talent, the scale to do so. So they invested in it in a big way. Um, but I think with all the risks on other areas of the business, they cannot continue to lose $10 billion on, on streaming. So that's one area I, I, I think if any company was a, is going to be able to do it other than Netflix. It's going to be Disney. Um, they have the best IP. They're very financially prudent. They already have the scale since they were relatively early adopters into streaming. So I think in terms of streaming woes, they're in a better position than some of the other companies that are standalone. They don't have other profit centers to feed off of. Um, and I actually feel comfortable or optimistic on the glide path of streaming over the next couple of years even though it won't be the, the most profitable part of the business, I think the, the worst is hopefully in sight and will soon be behind us uh, on the Disney side. Um, I am worried on ads. ads. Uh, so tightening ad market is very true. Um, we've heard Paramount CEO talk about it. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO talked about it. This is super concerning um, for, for Disney given how big of their business the ad market is. So this is something that we'll definitely be monitoring and has really weighed on, on the stock as well. And then I think the last piece here, uh, pay TV exodus. Yeah. So similar like concern given how big of a part of Disney's business this is, but I at least have some peace of mind knowing how aggressively they've pushed into streaming. Um, so they do have lots of subs that are moving over there. I'd love to see them, um, continue to grow that base. So as they do price increases, we can see some scale and, and, and profitability come from it. Um, but however they do it, whether it's cutting content, spend a bit, increasing ARPU, whatever it is, they need to get the streaming business in a better spot. And I think the exodus of pay TV amplifies the need to do that is they're not going to have that cash cow or that cash cow that they have right now is going to become less and less relevant and, and less money flowing in. So they really need to get streaming to a profitable spot before that takes too far a turn for the worse that it's, it's no longer like profitable just to be in this entertainment space um, in terms of uh, content creation and distribution. I'll end on a, on a good note. <laughs> this one's a pretty small one, um, but Disney After Hours, it seems like they, they were planning this, this new um, endeavor of selling tickets uh, after the park closes to, to use the park, selling just like little things like popcorn, ice cream, stuff like that. 
Um, and it seems like uh, this is obviously just a play to continue to maximize profitability in the parks, which has been doing pretty well post COVID. Um, but this just really enables them to expand on the operating leverage they already have um, by keeping the park open more hours a day, obviously. So from a business standpoint, it completely makes sense. Um, and it seems like there is consumer demand for it. They sold out their first batch of after hour tickets. Um, so that's just great to see. Um, they have much more fundamental issues across other areas of their business, but great to see that at least on the resort side, they're really trying to maximize profit. Um, and it's met with very strong, um, com consumer demand, um, to help, you know, offset some of the woes that they're experiencing in other areas. My personal opinion on, on the company. Um, so I've owned Disney for, for years, um, despite owning it for, probably four or five years, I'm down on the position. Um, so it, it's definitely not an area of my portfolio that's done well, given all the disruption and, and what the pandemic did to the entertainment space there, uh, all the debt that Disney had to take on to get through that and then fund their streaming endeavors. Um, but I do see if I break out their segments and their business piece by piece, um, the opportunity to eventually get to high single digit EPS over time. So while they have a lot of issues that they're sorting through, if they're able to execute well on streaming, um, they're able to continue to fuel the box office closer to what it used to be with all of their billion dollar movies and how profitable that business was. Um, they're able to maintain um, the profitability and the strength of the parks and their adjacent entertainment uh, channels like cruise line, stuff like that. Um, I can see how this stock may be trading at 10 times um, earnings at current prices if I look out, you know, three, four years. So as a long-term shareholder, really um, impressed with the IP and the content that they push out. They're also very financially prudent, even though they take a very long-term look. I think over time, Disney will do well. And this is just a good time to get in. Um, given there's no line of sight to, um, you know, having a good EPS, uh, next year necessarily, given all the headwinds and the ad market and the broader economy for a discretionary spend company. But I think it's a good long-term investment to hold. Um, I'll be honest, this one, I have some blind faith in because of just the management team and what they've accomplished in the past, uh, how strong their content is. I like where they play. Um, I think streaming will eventually get weeded out and become more profitable. It can't stay like this for long. It's just not economical. So whether it's, you know, one way or another, Disney is going to be at the forefront of entertainment. So I think um, the economics will come. And I do have some blind faith in this name, even though I really don't like leaning into investments with blind faith. Typically, um, I'd say about 90% of my portfolio are very strong companies that return capital to shareholders, have a very clear story, just riding organic growth trends and delivering operating leverage um, with the farther growth. Disney's definitely in that other 10%, one of only a couple companies that I own that are essentially a, a problem child that they definitely do have to execute, change some things up um, and, and deliver results. Still, it's still uh, juries out. Uh, but if they're able to deliver it and, and execute well, I can see a really strong return on the back end of it. So a bit of a riskier one, um, definitely not as, um, as, as simple and, and easy as some of my other investments in terms of what I expect from them. But I do see how this can potentially um, have stronger returns since I'm taking that risk in the stock here at about a $150 billion valuation. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the company. I'm not a financial advisor, so before you know making any investments, be sure to look into it yourself. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this review of just some of the news going out uh, recently that pertains to, to Disney and the company. If you like this type of content, um, please subscribe, comment and like the video if you have your own thoughts on Disney. Um, would love to hear anyone else's opinion on the company, the stock, the future. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in.